Hi, folks. This is Rich Wentworth. You might know me as Dr. Oppenheimer. And I'm Mike McQuilk, and you might know me as uh, Mike. And we're the creators of Hadron Gospel Hour. You know, folks, we all had a good time tonight, but I think we also learned a little something. Wait a minute. We haven't started the episode yet. What? We haven't? Nope. Well, then what are we... We're supposed to thank everyone for tuning in and remind everyone to rate and review us on iTunes. Oh, and to tell their friends about the show. Really? I don't know. That... It doesn't seem... You know what? Don't don't worry about it. Enjoy the show, folks. Uh, and don't forget to rate and review us at iTunes and tell your friends about the show. Yeah, I, I said that already. You did? Well, why didn't I... Let's just go listen to the show, okay? Say goodbye, Rich. Goodbye, Rich. Okay. Ri- that. Look, Ashley, I, I'd love to hear what signals and broadcast Cyrus's new cybernetic arm is picking up, but it smells like old gym socks dipped in sulfur out there, and I really have to finish this project. Mike. I understand that you've started this project several days ago and are eager to guide it towards its conclusion. I've just got to get this done. I agree. However, perhaps these signals emanating from Cyrus's arm possess a certain precedence over... I don't see how that's possible. What is it you're doing again? (sighs) Okay, my playlists are a mess. It's been like this forever and the madness has to stop. I wholeheartedly agree. There's unfinished instrumental lists, incomplete soundtrack lists, far too general 80s lists. I mean, Susie and the Banshees and Men Without Hats on the same list? Nuts, right? See what I'm talking about? Somewhat. And the mood bass lists. Scattershot at best. The potential to really ruin a riff jump experience is immense. I can't tell you how many times I've traveled to a never-before-seen world of alien majesty, only to be let down by the heavily produced, wholly inappropriate though super catchy pop metal of Def Leppard's Hysteria. Just a real bummer. I hear that. Okay, Mike. I will leave you to your list crafting. Thanks, Ashley. Just a few more (coughs) days and... Hmm. Curious. Doctor, I was wondering if you'd be available to listen to some strange signals emanating from... Uh, No time for that, I'm afraid. I am in the midst of a pursuit of cosmic proportions. Anything I can assist with? Uh, You already have, Ashley. I've cached some of your quantum RAM as an additional resource for the bunker's tracking equipment, allowing me to identify this rather elusive particle that seems to be exhibiting what can only be described as a bilocational nature, occupying multiple dimensions at the same time, effortlessly portaling through rifts like a dwarf burglar through an unsecured transom. Speaking of which, you'll be happy to know that I have successfully located and catalogued all of the remaining Esmeralda fragments. Ah yes, uh, that is good news. We will certainly address that at a later date. Uh, Excellent. I see you, you little quantum prowler. I will leave you to your experiment, Doctor. Thank you, Ashley. I I will indulge your request in the near future. In the meantime, is there something we can do about that lingering odor? It smells like a putrescine convention in here. Certainly, Doctor. I gotta tell you, Ashley. I really think this is a new low. I agree. They're both so into what they're doing. I've been calling for Mike to come out and chat for hours and I get no response at all now. I think Mike's gone and put the other earbud in. So annoying. And they're not even doing anything that important. I've been extending my new cyber arm in the kitchen. I can actually reach the fridge now. I know. That's fantastic, Cyrus. I've also noticed that the signals you pick up now from your arm seem to be getting stronger when you extend it. Like... Oh, like an antenna, but with wiggling metal fingers on it? That seems like an accurate comparison. Creepy and accurate. Aw, oh, thanks, Ashley! Quickly, everyone, I found it! Can we make this quick? I'm halfway through my rainy day nostalgia with a hint of ennui mood mix, and I just... I've successfully ensnared the quantum particle I've been tracking. Every manifestation of it, cross-referenced and targeted across numerous dimensions. I haven't the time nor the focus to explain just how utterly unlikely it was to accomplish such a feat. Suffice it to say that this will most certainly ensure yet another prominent presence in the annals of science for centuries to come. And? And I'm bringing it here! To potentially blow up the lab. Of of course not. That is to say, it it is not my intention Whatever. Just let me know when you want me to queue up my early Bauhaus Fields in the Nephilim mix. Prior to the explosion, if you would. You got the Crow movie soundtrack on that list, right? Of course. Scanning complete. No threat detected, Doctor. You may proceed with the extraction. Excellent. Thank you, Ashley. Now, let's see what we have here. I'm Higsby. Welcome back, Higsby. Greetings, Higsby. Higsby? Uh, Do do we know this? Greetings, Dr. Oppenheimer. It is good to see you all again. Perhaps this will jar your memory. I walked into a bar. The bartender says, you know there were some guys in here looking for you. Ah, yes, Higgs boson particle. Recognition. This pleases me. Yes, excellent. Higsby, your existence is well documented, and as such will yield me no additional scientific glory. 
<sighs> I will mark this down in the official record as a full week of scientific experimentation wasted. Back to the proverbial drawing board. Uh, why don't you go and say hi to Mike Higsby? He's down the hall. An excellent idea. So I show up in this gorgeous, expansive ice world. A light snow falling, peaceful and profound. So you'd think that I'd have some fleet foxes or Enya queued up and ready to go, right? Seems about right. But no. What I hear assaulting my ears is a selection of prank calls from the jerky boys. I hit shuffle, trying to rescue the situation any way possible. What comes up? Uh, An unreleased demo track from Aerosmith's 1993 album, Get a Grip. Can you even imagine? Well, Mike, that sounds inconclusive. Just a nightmare. Well, I'd love to chat more, Higsby, but I'm knee-deep in the hoopla on this, and nothing's going to stop us now, if you hear what I'm saying. Seems to be an allusion to some sort of lyrically challenged statement of... Going to put the other headphone in now, so... Ah, <laughs> no problem, Mike. We will catch up later. Thanks, Higsby. Sorry, I just need to get this done. We will definitely catch up later. Now it's just rude. I'm disgusted. Actually, I'm a bit concerned. Is something the matter with them? We passed concerned a week ago. Settling uncomfortably and absolutely fed up about 24 hours ago. It's like they lost all their social skills overnight. With Mike alone, I'm detecting a 40 to 50 percent decrease in socialization technique and application. How about the doc? His is about a 10 percent deficit. Hmm. Well, I guess there's only so low you can go out of a hundred. We need to somehow raise their level of engagement. Oh, believe me, we've tried. You have? It's true. I've tried initiating a board game night pointed out several cosmic anomalies of note. I remixed a bunch of the tales from the Hadron Rift, gave it a sort of Max Hedron feel to it. No luck. Well, all of that seems perfectly engaging to me. How about you, Cyrus? Well, truth be told, I prefer a nice half feeder of hot sleepy time tea and a good audiobook. Every once in a while, I'll yell requests from the hall, half expecting a response, but mostly just to hear the sound of my own voice. I find it soothing. It soothes me, you know? Hmm. Is there someone else we could talk to about this? Like who? Perhaps another social creature with an updated and current social calendar of note? Hmm. Thanks again for your input on this, Commander Funk. No problem at all, Ashley. Sounds like you folks got yourselves a cabin fever conundrum. Or at the very least, a scorching case of the turn-off, tune-out, drop-out. That's what I was saying! Ashley! Are you aware that the refrigerator door is open and there are spoiled foodstuffs emanating a foul odor from within? Yes, actually. Cyrus was practicing stretching his arm. He got as far as the handle, but the accuracy is a little... off. Would you like me to close the door in order to contain the noxious and offensive odor? Nah. Keep it open. It's the little joys I relish. So here's the deal. The way I see it, you got but one clear course of action to pull these daydreamers out of their head clouds. What's that? It's easy. You just gotta get these guys, uh, you gotta find these guys' dates. Dates? In space? In space, in time, indubitably. Wherever and however, my funky brothers and sisters, you gotta get these guys out and face to face with female companionship before they... Before they... Well, before they become the type of guys that uh, wear headphones attached to nothing to avoid talking to people on the subway, consider showering the biggest pain in the ass of the day, have groceries delivered to P.O. boxes. The type of man that completely freaks out during temporary outages in their Netflix accounts. We can't let that happen. In the year 2008, in a secret underground lab beneath the Large Hadron Collider, Dr. Oppenheimer Valdini was experimenting with a way to weaponize the so-called Hadron Effect and create the most destructive force ever known to mankind. A freak accident caused the Hadron weapon to misfire, tearing a rift in the fabric of space-time remaking our world and the parallel timelines of the multiverse into an infinite succession of horrors. Mike Wilkinson, IT guy by day and indie filmmaker by night, was snatched from his world and thrust into a terrifying dimension of madness and pseudoscience. Now, Oppenheimer and Mike roam the multiverse, chronicling the end of all that is desperately trying to find a way to heal the rift and restore order to the timelines the only way they know how by hosting a podcast Hadron Gospel Hour written by Michael McQuilkin and Richard Wentworth starring Richard Wentworth Michael McQuilkin Lisa McQuilkin Mike Atkinson Kevin Harrington Vera Schranken and Rebecca White And now, 
The hour has arrived. Patron Gospel Hour. How's the playlist project coming along, Mike? Oh, hi, Ashley. This last one is a toughie. It's the first year with the driver's license mix, back when you think everything on the radio is amazing because it's your radio. It's the most diluted of all the playlists. Interesting. Interesting. Hey, I am also working on a project about human compatibility, and I was wondering if I could have some of your input. Uh, yeah, sure. Go for it. Okay, great. First question. What do you think is the most important value in a relationship? Um, trust. What are you most proud of? Pride can be a slippery slope, but... I guess I'd have to say my ability to keep a fairly level head in stressful circumstances. Are you a morning or night person? Night. What is your first crush? Moose on You Can't Do That on Television. If you could go back in time and change one... Oh, um, we can skip that one. Please. If you're an animal in the wild, what kind of animal would you be? And describe your typical day as that animal. Seriously? The Trouble with Physics, The Rise of String Theory, The Fall of a Science, and What Comes Next by Lee Smolin. Favorite musician or band? Well, when I have time for it, and more often than not I don't, I enjoy exploring the catalog of experimental electronic pioneer and misunderstood genius Bruce Hack. His work continuously evolved and was often simultaneously riveting and evocative, and the only constant seemed to be a childlike sense of wonder and discovery running throughout his numerous compositions. Are you a morning or a night person? Ashley... I am certain that you are just as aware as I that time is an illusion. Okay, we can skip that one. Um, if you were going to have friends over, what would you cook? Well, I would expect that these friends you speak of are in fact fully functional adults that can feed themselves. I'm sure that's true. First crush? <laughs> that's easy. Moose from You Can't Do That on Television. Well, that's it for me. Enough pointless rediscovery of already discovered phenomenon and romantic self-reflection for one day, methinks. I'm off to bed. Have a good night, Doctor. Thank you for your participation. Of course. Good night, Ashley. Ashley, have you gathered the necessary data yet? Yes, Higsby. I believe we have adequate input from both of our subjects to proceed. This pleases me. While you were gathering, I examined Cyrus's current state. He is indeed receiving signals from all over the universe as a result of his newly acquired cybernetic arm. But there's more. Oh? Because of his phase, quantum state, with parts of him spread out over multiple dimensions, we can actually use him as a sort of bank of superconducted receptors. I can take the data you gathered and establish a likely match throughout all the responding layers of the multiverse to find their perfect match. Hmm. Cyrus, are you open to being used in such a fashion? Are you kidding me? Of course! It's only like the coolest thing I've ever heard! Being used as a... as a... Particle net. Particle net? Where do I sign? Also, what's my signature gonna look like? This is a win-win for everyone! Well, there you go. Cyrus is in. This pleases me. I did not expect to be pleased today, and this really pleases me. Oh, hey, Higsby. Hello, Mike. Ready to catch up? Uh, sure. How have you... Let's go on a jaunt through the rift. I think Ashley and Dr. Oppenheimer are going to disinfect the lab, and we probably don't want to be around for that. I guess not. Okay, where to? I have just the place. Oh, man, this place is great. Looks just like Kennedy Lake Amusement Park. I went there every summer as a kid and got a job there when I was old enough. Those were... those days were the best. There is certainly enough stimulus in the vicinity to keep the senses reeling for quite a while, Mike. I can see why you would be drawn here as a youth. Well, not just youth. I worked on and off at Canopy for years. Got into an argument about one ride with the management. The Ansco rocket ship, later dubbed the USA Missile. Fools. Bureaucratic fools. What happened? Ah, it's not worth it. Well... I got fired over it, so that's really that, I guess. Hey, they have an arcade! I was just going to suggest that. There's Spy Hunter, there's Asteroids, there's Dragon's Lair, there's... Oh, there's Sinistar. This place is amazing. They seem a little absurd to me as far as simulations go. What sort of space invaders line up in rows that slowly descend on their target? A poor strategy at best. I gotta play some of these immediately. Uh, excuse me, where do I get quarters for the machine? Have you tried going to a bank and asking for money? But the heavier kind? Uh, yeah, but only when I'm sporting crutches. That way they feel bad for me and have to take it out to my car. That's cool. If you're into degrading working class folk for kicks. Oh, believe me, if it weren't for service industry on service industry crime, I'd have nothing to do with my Saturdays. That's a pretty sad admission. Look, I get it. I'm a brave, brave man. But I didn't come here to fish for compliments. You sure? Who's your friend? I'm Higsby. Hi, Higsby. Oh, crap. Uh, Higsby, you should probably, uh... Keep a lower profile or... Trust me. 
With all the oscillating blinking lights and bad art school dioramas here, I doubt anyone's going to bat an eye at a talking Higgs boson particle. You know he's a Higgs boson particle? Yeah. What else would he be? Well, he could be... Jeez. Pretty level-headed. Also, the name Higsby is about 75% there, so there's that. You know what? I'm going to leave you two for a bit. Don't want to attract any unwanted attention. You sure, Higsby? I I can... Nope, nope. It's fine. I'll meet you back at the lab. Oh, before I do, I walk into a church. The pastor notices and says, Whoa, whoa, we can't have you in here. To which I reply, But without me, there can be no mass! (laughs) Boson humor? Boson Boson humor. humor. So, when I protested the closing of the rocket ride, they finally fired me. I remember that ride. We had one here. You sit in this big metal tube with a 16mm film loop playing in the front. And someone controlling the XY axis movement with a captain's chair and a joystick in the back to match the action on screen. It was amazing. Like being in a moving movie theater. Best ride in the park. Agreed. I wish I could get fired. I think I did too. I guess I was just looking for... An excuse to move on? Exactly. That someone else made for you? Yeah. Sounds kind of pathetic. Yeah, maybe. But I totally get it. Really? Yeah, absolutely. Hey... You want to come to an after-hours Counter-Strike land game at the park tonight? It's above the arcade. Did you just say that to me, or was that my interior wish (laughs) monologue? (laughs) No, I use my outside voice. Okay, favorite Doctor Who? Tom Baker. Favorite film director? It's a tie between Wes Anderson, Hal Hartley, and Orson Welles. My turn. Favorite sequel? Empire. Mac or PC? PC, Jesus. Favorite band? Well, they're sort of... And if you say a band from Norway... I will freak out and follow you to the ends of the earth and beyond. Uh Uh-huh. Hugs! Land party? I've got a better idea. A science museum? Really? Higsby, I feel this little excursion into adolescent academia is is a waste of precious time. We are beyond such things. You as a concept and myself as conceptualizer, there is so much more we have to offer the universe at large. Oh, I apologize, Doctor. I thought you would enjoy such a place, a hub of science, history, and technology. I've already wasted so much time erroneously, but no less effectively, tracking you across the multiverse. Oh, that's what you were doing. I knew you were following me the whole time. I was just waiting for the invite back. That makes sense now. I thought it was taking an exorbitant amount of time. Hmm. Yes, excellent. We should go. Oh, look! A planetarium. I love planetariums. Yes, how quaint. Why go outside and look at the sky when you can go inside and gaze at an underwhelming small-scale replica of the sky? So, string theory, M theory, many names for the same thing, all possessed of the same scientific worth, that of mere theory. I posit that the amount of time wasted on such inconclusive and quite frankly currently unprovable conjecture is time better served addressing that which can be proved. We, and by we I mean no one else in this room, know what can be discovered on this earthly plane and all it takes is several billion dollars and the participation of serious minded pioneers of science. Quit wasting time on theories that could give a damn about gravity. And let's accelerate to Z-theory and be done with it. Whoa! What does this have to do with planets? Oh, probably nothing. But quite possibly, everything. Either way, it is highly unlikely that these ideas will ever prove more than utterly incongruous to each and every one of you. Boo! Are there any more questions? Nobody asked any questions. When's Laser Floyd coming on? Yes, excellent. Well, without further ado, here is laser-based pre-recorded distractions set to overwrought psychedelic music to help ease the pain of limited comprehension of one's own existence. Enjoy. You don't have to sit through the whole thing, Doctor. I just wanted to have a look. Uh, Actually, Higsby, let's stick around for a bit, if you don't mind. Not at all. Hello. Yes? That was uh, quite the diatribe earlier. I'd like to say it comforts me to hear this, but I doubt that would be even remotely close to the truth. Uh, Yes. Uh, Well, I am uh, Dr. Francis Oppenheimer Valdini. Interesting. Isn't it? The pause. It seemed to indicate that name would somehow register. 
What a lonely little pause it must be. Now see here. I will have you know that I'm one of the preeminent scientists in my field. As am I. Well, I... I've never heard of you. Your deft attempts at flattery won't work on me, Vin Diesel. Valdini. And you haven't even asked me my name. Ah, yes. Uh, my apologies. Uh, you are... Professor Alberta Fermi. Hmm. Well, I certainly hope your unread papers were writ of some sort of time-based subjects, as you were quite good at wasting it. Now see here, I merely wanted to commend you on a... admittedly acerbic, but no less accurate indictment of the current state. Well, your current state? Of scientific research. And was that what just happened? Well, I suppose. Excellent. Then our exchange has met its merciful end. Now, if you'll excuse me. Of course. There must be thousands of people in the vicinity that you could further alienate. Spoken like a true, or rather mere statistician. (laughs) Hmm. Interesting acoustics in this room. Mm, Yes. I've noticed that as well. There is a precedent of live performances here and there. Interesting. Glad it's not going to waste. I agree. It would be a shame. Indeed. A hand hand for for each each hand hand was planned for for the world. world. Why Why do my fingers fingers reach? The millions of grains of sand in the world. Why Why such a lonely beach? Where are the shoes that click to my clack? Where is the voice to answer mine back? I'm all alone in the world. Hello, Doctor. Greetings, Higsby. And hello... Professor Alberta Fermi. Pleased to meet such an impressively put-together AI, Miss... Ashley. And thank you, Professor. And might I add that you have a very spot-on Baroness cosplay thing going on as well. Who? It's the glasses. Yes, well, uh, the professor will be staying with us for a spell, if that's all right, Ashley. Of course, Doctor. Welcome aboard, Professor. Hey, guys. Sorry to drop this on short notice, but do you mind if... Oh. Uh, hey, hey there, other person. There is. I was inclined to offer a similar acknowledgement. And I thought I'd use an old trick to cut through awkward moments. Here goes... Hello, everyone. My name is Michelle. Oh, sorry. Guys, this is Michelle. My, um... Date is fine. Really? Uh, my date. Well, what are the chances? I, too, have happened upon a companion with presumably intimate intentions. Presumably is... fair. Hello. I am Professor Alberta Fermi. Hi, Professor. So, you're all okay with Michelle and Alberta sticking around for a while? Romantic. Of course. The more the merrier, right, guys? I always say that! Of course. Ah, Higsby, we have you to thank for these serendipitous happy accidents. Yeah, thanks, Higsby. Good call on those jaunts. Glad to assist, Mike. It pleases me. Ashley, it may not be apparent, but I wanted to indicate that I'm winking at this moment to quietly acknowledge a job well done. I could tell. And thus completes the tour of our lab on the Rift's Edge. A lone citadel of exploration and hope for the countless life forms across this scarred multiverse. You should put that on a flag, Doc. A space flag. That's a great idea, Cyrus. Just make sure it doesn't ripple or folks will think we faked the moon landing. That conspiracy drives me nuts. Ugh, me too. Don't even get me started. Doctor, I find your facilities commendable. If a tad underwhelming in the mid-century modern design side of things. We're working on that. Oh, that's too bad. I- I do have a question, though. While I understand the fascination with the rift and the desire to be as close as possible to the focal source, how do you remain completely in the dark as to its origin? You have no idea how it occurred? (coughs) (coughs) I'm afraid it's impossible to tell at this juncture. I never use the word impossible. Unless I'm trying to quickly shut down an exchange while simultaneously underscoring my superior intellect. Ah, well, well I certainly wasn't implying that. Uh, I... Weren't you? Well, perhaps to a certain... Hey, Mike! 
How about uh, showing us some of those uh, VHS tapes you fake like? I fake love that idea, Michelle. Yeah, movie night! Yes, excellent idea. Now, this intrigues me. Ashley, prepare the stadium seating, illuminate the emergency exit lights, and warm up the VTR. Because tonight, we are in for a very special Tales from the Hadron Rift! Hey, Cyrus. Oh, hey, Mike. Haven't seen you guys in a few days. What's cooking? Cooking? Oh, uh, nothing. Nothing much. How about you? Ah, uh, you know me. Same old, same old. Been listening to a lot of broadcasts from all over the universe with my new arm. Lots of weird stuff out there. But I just find myself drawn to it, you know? I guess I'm just a sucker for the kooky things of life. Can't stop listening. That's cool. Anything else, um, uh, cool going on? Not really. I'm still stuck on the wall. Yeah. Yeah, not much we can do about that, I suppose. Guess not. Hey, is everything kosher with you and... Michelle? Yeah, sure. Sure, I guess. Yeah. Well, that's a good thing. Actually, you know what? It kind of sucks. Everything was all fireworks and goofy fun for the first week, but this whole week just went south kind of quick. Oh, how so? Manual coffee has no place in the modern lab. Oh, hello, Michael. Cyrus. Hey, Doc. Haven't uh, seen the two of you uh, in quite some time, it seems. Yeah, what's up, Doc? Hmm, surprised we haven't heard that one yet. Oh, well, um, I've been sleeping in the Rift Room this past week. Yeah? How come? Well, you know how these contemporary scientists can be with their interleave practices, hypervisualization mnemonics, and spaced repetition. Quite frankly, I myself could use the extra time to further my own research. Well, that sounds pretty good. Oh, to hell with it! I've been living in a volatile cocoon of domestic misery for two weeks, and I've just about had it. Wow. Sheesh. It's all unacceptable this, and not to be disturbed that. This manual coffee is woefully prepared, Doctor. We're out of trail mix again, Doctor. It does not stop. Oh, man, am I glad you said something. You as well, Michael? Well, it's different. Still miserable, but it's like we have nothing to do. We're both so damned easygoing, we can't decide on any sort of activity. Oh, what do you want to do? Uh, whatever you want. Well, I got nothing. Well, me neither. That's cool with me. Cool with me, too. Cool. 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 Goodness. We just had our first real argument a couple days ago. It was about how we never argue about anything. Wow, sounds like you guys have it really rough. Dr. Valdini, have you seen my shoulder pads? I can't seem to find them anywhere. Let's hide in the kitchen. I gotta tell you guys, that music is sour news to Commander Funk's brain meat. Oh, come on guys, I I'm on the space phone. Yeah, sorry to dump all this on you, Funk, but we just... we're just not sure what to do. Doomed to an emotional internment on our own vessel. Now it's a vessel? Mike, Dr. Oppenheimer, we're sorry about all this. We... Uh, we want you guys to stay frosty and funky fresh for the ages. Just because your current dig's got a minor case of the drags don't mean you can't take a break. Well, I don't know what we can do about it right now. You should come by. Your ship? Yeah, the Deus Ex Machina. We're orbiting the area right now. I could send a portal. I got plenty of rum and homemade philanum. I'm in. Okay, let's go. Ashley, if they ask, let the ladies know that we... Um... Went out. Affirmative, Doctor. Cyrus, I feel awful. This is all our fault. Don't feel too bad, Ashley. All we wanted was for them to engage more. We meant well. And besides, I blame Commander Funk. I don't know. Something about these two girls that doesn't compute. You mean how, like, they're the exact same people as Mike and the Doc? They are very similar, yes, but... Oh, no. We need to speak with Higsby. Higsby, do you read me? It's Ashley from... Hello, Ashley. Oh. Hello, Higsby. That was quick. Oh, I was already here. Boson humor? No, no. Just floating around, keeping a low profile. Sounds like boson humor to me. Higsby, about that data I compiled, how did you process it? Oh, well, I parsed it for certain keywords in the subject's native languages and adapted it to my search model for perfect matches of Mike and Oppenheimer. Seems reasonable. So you already established a search model for each of them? Oh, yes. A perfect match. Perfect in what way? Well... Identical species of origin, 99.998% economic, social, and experiential backgrounds matching DNA panels, minus the Y-chromosome, of course. Higsby, 
You got the exact same people. As girls. Er, yes. Isn't that a perfect match? No, that's an identical match. Humans can't fall in love with themselves. Is that true? Oh! Uh-oh. Ashley, we want to hear everything. Everything? All of it. Starting with the rift. So it's like, why even... Why even try? Right. So true. I'm the, I'm there asking what, you know, she'd like to watch. Consider it. Very. I hear you, brother. Time is a flat circle. And she... She says... Whatever you want to watch is fine with me. Ouch. Fine with me? What What the heck is that crap? You can't counter consideration with consideration. That's like the any, any matter of consideration. There is neither a scientific term nor precedent for that. Respect. Right, right, right. It all boils down to respect, man. Without that, what do you got? What? Come on. Without respect, what do you got? Um, anger? No, no. Come on. Tedium. Bummed out. No. A mutual appreciation of disparate ideals. Hey, man, throw us a bone on this one. Without respect, what do you got? Silence. Without respect, there's silence. Oh. Like a grave. That's some heavy stuff you slinging, hombre. I can't tell you how much of a relief this is. Oh, good. I'm glad you feel that way, Michelle. I mean, he got every single one of my quippy pop culture references. Every one. I was beginning to think I was pretty shallow. A life half lived. And what a brilliant, tortured genius, this Dr. Oppenheimer. Burdened not only with the guilt of his universe-threatening actions, but to have found his one true love in Esmeralda, only to have her snatched away. Yes. It has become his life's work to collect the remaining Esmeralda fragments and heal the rift once and for all. Well, not these last couple of weeks. True enough. It is clear to me that we should return to our respective timelines. Else could risk further delays to this vitally important task of the multiverse's reconstitution. It feels weird to just split, but I agree. We're not doing them any good sticking around. Just wish there was something we could do to help. You've really done enough, lady. Hmm. Perhaps there is. Higsby, can you still retrofit Cyrus's quantum form for transmission? I sure can. Excellent. Ashley, tell me more of these Esmeralda fragments. Shh! Shh! You shh! I don't care if they hear us. Come on, man. Be cool. They're going to know. Know what? They're going to know we've been drinking. So? Look, guys, you are on a mission. It's got to go down like this, all right? So don't blow your tops. You just walk right up to them and say, Ladies, we gave it the old college try, but like starships phasing in the night, it just didn't pan out. No hard feelings. Just hit the bricks and never look back. Because the past is only there to haunt us and the future's not waiting on anyone. Capiche? Seems reasonable. I'm telling you, works like a charm every time. Every single time. Shh! I told you I don't care! Oh! Gr- greetings, Doctor, Mike, and Commander. What is the meaning of this? Just, uh, um, doing an experiment thing. Ashley, coordinate set? Affirmative. Excellent. Higsby, Cyrus, ready? I demand to know what's going on here immediately. Now, uh, Doc, Mike, uh, let's stay focused, dig? You fellas came here to tell these fine ladies something, right? Yeah. Ashley, Higsby, engage. Hey guys, want to cover your eyes for a sec? The screen here says to cover your eyes. What? Esmeralda, is is that really you? Yes, my love. I'm not quite sure what's going on, but so happy to see you, Esme. But but how? Ashley had successfully cataloged and pinpointed all of Esmeralda's fragments. Using Higsby power and Cyrus as a multi honed relay, we are able to generate a conscious, non corporeal manifestation of Esmeralda in the lab for a short time. Greetings, Esmeralda. Ashley, I'm so glad you're okay. After. After. Was there. Did something happen? Oh, Esmeralda, it's all my fault. You tried to warn me, but I. Uh, I. Yes. The explosion. A terrible. 
terrible explosion. I remember now. Is everyone all right? Quite frankly, my darling, no. Oh, no. Cyrus? No, no, Cy Cyrus is fine. Hi, Esmeralda. Yeah, Cyrus has just fused her wall and had his arm replaced with a cybernetic one. You? I know you. I'm Mike, a f friend of your husband's. I've heard a lot about you, ma'am, and I'm glad to speak with you finally, but I, I don't think we've met. I can't explain it, but you are familiar to me. Oh, my darling Francis, this is all so strange. I know. I know, sweetheart, and, and I'm sorry for that. I wish, I wish much were different. I, I wish I could say that all of my work on the Hadron Project did not culminate with the single greatest regret of my life. Your banishment from mine. I wish I could take your hand and walk you away from this, but... I can't. Francis, my love. You always had a flair for beating yourself up over things no single mind could grasp. Whatever happened, our journey was and is a series of bold decisions. Willingly and enthusiastically made together. For the promise of discovery. The potential of change. Change for the greater good. I saw this the first day I met you. I peered through that thick curtain of isolation and saw a man I didn't want to spend any more time without. I miss you, Esme. I need to find a way to... You always have a plan, Francis, my love. I believe in you. Doctor, I'm sorry, but... We only have a few more moments of power. No! Esmeralda, please. It's okay. It's okay. There is no pain in this state. And time is... It just feels like the lab incident was just a few minutes ago. Esmeralda, listen carefully. You're right. I do have a plan, and it will take some time, but, but know this. There is nothing in this universe that will force me to say goodbye to you again. I will see you soon. This is a promise etched in the very fabric of all that is, and all that will Francis. be. Esme. Doctor, I'm sorry. There just wasn't enough power to sustain. Everyone, I cannot thank you enough for the wonderful gift bestowed upon me. I know you all worked incredibly hard to make this unlikely experiment a success, and I congratulate you on a remarkable success. You have my deepest gratitude. You're welcome, Doctor. Our pleasure. This pleases me. It was an honor, Doctor. Professor Fermi, thank you for taking the lead on this particular project, for putting the pieces together. Full disclosure, we felt compelled to do it, Doctor. After hearing your collective struggles from Ashley, all that loss, the cruelty of the universe hovering all around you, and yet the wherewithal and presence of mind to hold out for hope and recruit such a talented group of minds and... Uh, Cyrus. What's that? Yes, Cyrus. Well, it's no wonder that you already found your true love. The next step to find her, even for a moment, was obvious. Not to mention the fact that we're like girl clone versions of both of you. What? It's true. Your buddy the bosun over there took matchmaking to a whole new level. We're other dimensional versions of each other. Oh. Makes sense, right? Perfect sense. I thought something was up. I mean, who else loves AHA as much as we well, do? Lots of people. Yeah, in other countries, like Brazil and Europe. They never could break that fickle US market again. Better off. You really want to share Billboard Top 20 space with adolescent Disney stars and people like Alan Thicke's son leapfrogging over you? I'm glad you don't know that guy's name. Me too. Thanks, Ashley. Well, it was an interesting couple of weeks, but we've got to head off to our own adventures. Indeed. You're leaving? Yes. This universe already has its Mike and Oppenheimer on the case. Michelle and I have decided to head back to the Science Museum and... Start anew. No more amusement park? Yeah, I heard Laser Floyd, and I was sold. Well, I'm glad you found a way to move on without waiting for someone to fire you, Michelle. Me too, Mike. 
Me too. Thank you both once again. I will cherish the... No, not cherish. I, I will appreciate... No. Uh, acknowledge... And we will as well, Doctor. Goodbye! Bye. Goodbye! Bye. Farewell! Bye. Farewell! Bye. Farewell. Bye. Farewell. Bye. Farewell. Bye. Well, adventure of the week complete. We should, uh... Gentlemen, that was by far the weakest breakup I've ever seen! Just pathetic, man! I agree! Hey, yeah! <sighs> Duly noted, Commander. Higsby, you sticking around? It pleases me. It pleases us, Higsby. It really pleases us. Hmm. Heartwarming. Well, the briefest of respites has allowed us, I'm afraid. We've a renewed sense of our mission now, and yet one can only wonder what the future will hold for us. What new vistas? What dangers? Only one way to find out, Doc. <laughs> Quite right, Michael. Ashley, open the rift! Patreon Gospel Hour Season 1 was written and produced by Richard Wentworth and Michael McWilkin with production assistance from Katie Falvey and Rebecca White. Special thanks to Kevin Harrington, Sam Cusick, Kevin Undergaro, Andrew McKenzie, Jason Squamata, Kamikaze, Geek Comedy Night, Bob Wilson Signs, and everyone who's listened and downloaded. Find more episodes at HadronGospelHour.com. Keep on telling your friends. We'll see you next season for more Hadron Gospel Hours.